In this video, we're gonna cover four common mistakes I see on way too many Squarespace websites, especially if you are building your first website. Maybe you just started out or you don't know website design at all. These things are gonna help you understand what to look out for to make sure your site is beautiful and people don't look at your site and say, oh, an amateur built this, or this is like not really a website. Let's dive in. All right, we're gonna hop into these right now. What I wanna say is that you might look at some of these and be like, whoa, I would never do that. But just bear in mind that these rules and principles apply to your whole website. And these four tips are gonna come honestly from one section, the header. I don't know how much I can tell you how many times I've seen headers that look and feel like they were thrown together and I'm not sure where the thinking comes from. But we're gonna make this as easy as possible for you to understand what to focus on. So let's take a look at my pretty ugly demo website. All right, so there's a lot of mistakes here right now. Honestly, for the most part, it looks decent, but this is not the way we wanna go about our website. The first issue I wanna talk about is the actual size of the navigation. Your main navigation should take as little space as possible. It should be clear, but it should take as little space as possible. I'm not sure how this happens, but out of the blue, I've seen websites that just the vertical padding is just ginormous. This is how you got to think about it. And it does involve two factors. Number one, your vertical padding should be thinner. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. But number two, it starts to bleed into logo issues. And so let's get into this and really sort this out so you can make your site a better experience. First thing, go into the editor and click edit and then hit edit site header. The first thing we wanna do is click on, let me move this up. The first thing we wanna do is click on the desktop view and then we wanna to go to vertical padding. So here is where a lot of the mess is coming from. What we want to probably get to is something around two all the way down to one. Even one right here has a lot of spacing. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it at one for now. But the other thing we gotta consider is that we just have a really big logo. And so I'm gonna go out of this setting. Well, let me show you here. I'm gonna go to the globe here and then go to site title and logo. If you have a visual logo here, I just have text, but if you have a visual logo, you'll go in here and there'll be a, a setting right here where you could adjust the pixels. Just bring those pixels down. If you have a logo that has to say a lot, there's a lot of small words, just cut those words. It's not the place for it. That top bar should be as minimal as possible. Go take a look at nike.com, apple.com, especially apple.com. Their logo is significantly small on their website, though they have a trillion dollar company. Let's take some tips and advice from them on this and really consider that your logo doesn't need to fill up 50% of the screen. Also, you just end up with a lot of dead white space when that does happen, especially if the logo is a circle or is just trying to say a lot, just keep it as small as possible. But because this is text here, I'm gonna click on this paintbrush, go to site styles, go to fonts. And then once I'm in here, I'll click on this little blue box around this site title. And then right now I got a six, so I'm gonna bring this four. And I'm actually gonna change the styling a little bit. I'll go custom and I'm gonna adjust this a bit to more of my liking. Now, this is obviously the spot you have a logo. Um, but in this case, because we're just working off of this demo, this little preview here, there for now, perfect, cool. Now that feels more like a logo and now you'll see the spacing here needs a little bit of work, but we'll get into that in a moment. Now, our site already feels way better. We dealt with the size of the main navigation, the vertical padding, and also the logo. The logo should just be small enough to be seen and clear but not be big enough to take up so much real estate or waste a bunch of space. But this leads us to number two, which you still see on my screen here, which is this issue of the menu being on two lines. Now, on this full experience, it doesn't show up this way, but this is 
also a little bit extreme and drastic. Let me actually just make this more clear of what the issue is. So I just added a few links here, but this is the problem. When you start to get a menu that looks like this, this is a, a big red flag, no go. We gotta fix this in a few ways. Number one, you only really want links at the top of your site that direct people to take action on your website. You don't need everything, you just need what's essential to take action. For example, if you're a consultant, but you happen to have, and you're, you're looking for people to hire you for uh, your services, but you happen to have a blog and additional resources for them, all those additional resources can go in the footer. They could go live somewhere else, or they could be in a folder dropdown, which we'll sh I'll show you how to create that right now. But everything should point to whatever this button is here. So right now we have way too many links and we want to cut this down. Two ways we can do that. Number one, we could put those links in the footer, like I said, or we could create a folder. So I'll come in here and I'll just go down to the bottom and hit folder. Then from there, I'll call this services then I'll be able to just click and drag and then add different services into this folder, just like that. And before you know it, you're gonna be able to solve so much of this right away. I'm gonna add one more folder to talk about about us and then add in a few links here. And just like that, we've added in two, like we've streamlined this so, so much. Your menu should never on the full screen size fall on two lines. Honestly, even if it gets down to this size that you see on my screen, which is probably about a thousand pixels wide, 900 to a thousand, you don't want it to fall on two lines. That just means there's too many options. The paradox of choice says when I have too many options, I don't know what to go with. So give people clear choices on what they need to take a next step. Number three, we're gonna talk about your headers. This is the way you formulate headers. Content is unique, structure is similar. Let me show you what I mean. When you go to someone's website, you wanna be able to go to a page and see something that looks familiar as you go through the different pages. So here is one page. But then if I go to about, if I go to the about us page, and let's say I'd start designing this page and I do add section, I just start with a blank section, and then I add in a title here, and I just go about us, and I add that in. Let's just say this is my about page, okay? So now the previous page we just were on feels totally different. This feels totally different than this. And what I see often is that a contact page looks different than about page, that looks different than a service page, that looks different than a home page. They all just feel different. One of the best things you can do is have some sense of consistency in the headers. Obviously the content's unique, but the headers feel similar. The way we do this is, what I would do here is I wouldn't put the about us here. What I would end up doing is I'd have a section that looks very similar to the home page. In a sense, I would do this and then make that an H1. I don't really need that. And then whatever spacing, now this is the key here, the spacing for your sections should have some type of flow. So if I do fill section here, if I use like medium for the headers and then small for all the other sections, great. If I use medium for everything, great. But it shouldn't be all over the place. <laughs> it should be super consistent across your site. This is how we really bring a sense of professionalism and like flow to the website because predictability is a big part of this. So when I come to somebody's website, I'm gonna move this up and then I'm gonna move that there. I want the header for the home page to be 100%, so that'll be like large right about there. But for other pages, I can deal with medium because it just gives enough space. I really don't like the amount that this curves. I think it's, whoa, not that. No, not that, that's what I want. I just want a slight curve. I don't like how much it's curving. It's just wasting a lot of space. And so I'll do something like this and then have this section. Now it feels much more like the other page, even though the image at the end of the day will be different. Here I could say, we are the best for a lot of reasons. Let's just do something like that. And then something like that. Boom, cool. So here's some text about us and what we do. Boom, that looks much more in line. 
So the contact page should look similar. Uh, the services page should look similar. A lot of the other pages should look similar. Now, some pages might not look similar, which those caveats would be potentially the contact page or potentially a form or a checkout or anything somebody's gonna take action on. You don't wanna make it hard for them to take action. So putting the action item right there at the top is great. But for the most part, all the other pages should be relatively consistent across the board. So now we have this feel here. And so this is what the about page looks like. Then I go to this fun page and I would basically design the same things. And that's what I love about save sections. So I just go back here. I click on the heart, click on the heart, get out of here, go back to fun, click edit, add section, save section, boom, paste that in and then come right here and paste this in. Now I have the exact same spacing. I say this just like that. I've created it. And now when I go there or there, I feel like I'm on the same site. Obviously it's the same image here, but even if they were separate images, it would work great. And as you can see here, this is back to the initial page I was working on. This has like some really weird spacing section here. And then here there's like, random dead space and then this is okay and then like i don't know what's happening here the flow is just confusing me and then there's content and then there's these weird shapes there's just a lot going on so the way we focus in on spacing as well is i'm gonna hit g on my keyboard few key things here okay i'm gonna take all these items and push them all the way to the top to the very top of the grid and then the bottom of the grid is gonna touch like I'm not gonna leave any extra space. So the grid, whatever items I have in here are gonna touch the top and the bottom of the grid. If I want the page to take up more space or the section to take up more, more space on the screen, then I'll go to edit and that's where I'll change this to medium or large. That's how you add additional spacing to sections, not by using the grid. There's only one time you'll do that and I'll show you right now when, but in this case, that's not when we do it. So if I go here, let me just get rid of this divider so it's consistent. But L basically takes up the full width of the screen. So if I, it's whatever the screen size, it will be the full width, sorry, full height of the screen. If you do medium, it's like, what is that, 80% of it? I don't know. It's probably like around 80% of the screen size. Guesstimate what it is. Again, any sections on a page after the header, I'll probably keep as the same exact size so that they're all the same. So it's, if I use medium, I'm using medium across all of them. Whatever that might be, choose it and then just stay consistent with it. Feels great. Now, the only time you don't do this is if you have a section like this where you want the content to touch the top section. So for example, if I want this to touch the top, well, I need the grid to touch the top. So if I go to edit section, you're gonna see the fill screen is off. So I, that's turned off. So the only reason I would have extra grid space here is if I just need an, I, I don't want it to touch like that. I want extra space there. So I'll put three extra right there. That looks just about nice. And that looks good. That is all perfect, well done. Fabulous. And number four, if you're getting value from this, we have a Fluid Engine starter kit that is so beneficial that it's gonna give you even more tips and insight on how to do this properly. But for number four, we gotta talk about mobile experience. The mobile experience for Fluid Engine and Squarespace is a completely different experience. And so you really have to optimize all your content for mobile and desktop separately. This is really valuable for anyone who's building a website. And as you build your site, how you leverage this is really up to you. So for example, this section here has this here, this here, this here. But if I go to mobile, I could design this however I like. So maybe I don't want the image to overlap there and I want this to go down here and I want this to go here. Maybe I want something like this to happen. I can do this, but you just gotta make sure you design it because if you added stuff and you were building things and like working like whatever, sometimes it might just leave random dead space like this. And so this might be pushed up to the top, but you have this random dead spot right here. So you wanna come in here, sort that, and then I'll drag this up. Cool, now that section's built. If I go back to the desktop, the desktop stays exactly as it is, 
while this section here is now designed in its own unique way, which is so cool. So you just gotta make sure you do that for your entire website. So those are four things that I see on way too many websites. Now, those are four things that I see on way too many websites that you won't have to deal with and will make your site look way more beautiful than you ever imagined. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.